Welcome. This morning, we're going to give you another Maristem Minute. Today, we have Ed Corgan. He is a senior technical agronomist with Brandt, and he's going to talk to us about understanding plant stress and how to mitigate that stress through the entire plant's life cycle. So, Ed, with that, we'll have you kick it off. Thank you so much, Melanie. So, understanding plant stress is really about uh, trying to realize um, what happens when we start getting those plants stressed out there? And the number one thing, when we start seeing those crops under stress, they automatically stop growing and producing sugars. And that producing sugars not only is above ground, but it's below ground and it's the root structure. And we really need to figure out how it is we're going to stop that uh, just plant sitting and we need to figure out how to mitigate stress. And we've got some new technologies that uh, Maristem is bringing to market that really have solved these problems. And we're gonna start looking at these growth stages. So let's keep this uh, under um, observation, the crops and stress and growing conditions producing sugars as being the important thing that we're gonna deal with. So plant stress, look, we're gonna look at both crops at the same time, corn and soybeans. They're very similar in how they deal with stress and they both, if we can get them started off in the early stages, we've really solved a problem. Low temperatures are one of the key ingredients that create stress for us in our little plants, but we have figured out ways to deal with that stress and today, and we know that in cooler soils, 50 degree soil temp, we will get the highest yield if we can solve that stress as a little seed is starting to germinate. And today we've got a couple of products that have really done very well. The Revline uh, Hopper Throttle for corn that contains ether and the Revline Soybean that contains ether. Ether, besides just being a talc material that uh, contains some zinc. Both products contain zinc and it's a very active zinc and it's right on the seed and, and helps with these low temperatures. But the ether is a part of it, it's enzymes. Enzymes are something that uh, really start to chew up the organic matter and release sugars, auxins to those little seeds, but they do something really importantly at that same time. 50 degree soil temperatures are really not very conducive for biologicals. And both of these products contain biologicals. And so to help stimulate them, now we've got the sugars released and they'll actually solve the problem of getting those biologicals running before that little seed germinates and gets going. That's what starts to make us the best crop, the record crops that we're wanting to produce that are very profitable is having both the ether technology as well as the biologicals and the zinc. Those are driving our yields and giving us the uh, biggest crop out there. Every plant coming up and germinating at the same time. We'll also, a lot of times when we push that envelope earlier, we'll have part of the field that gets compacted. Not always the whole field, but parts of it. And so we'll start to see those compacted areas have just a little bit more stress. That's another stress that besides the lower temperatures, those young seedlings will have to deal with. And lastly, some salts. As we're doing a better and better job of trying to meet all the nutrition, we're banding near the, near the plant, we'll start to get into some salt issues and the weather tends to drive that. And so as we look at that, how does the plant typically deal with this? Well, they deal with it through uh, a lot of organic acids and proline production. And now there's a product that actually in these early stages can actually take micronutrients, put it together with some protein and organic acids and actually deal with these three very big, low temperature compacted areas, salts. They'll actually detoxify that problem that those plants are having and get those roots working harder and get them to grow and actually uh, make them into something that uh, will give us those high yields. 
So Ed, you talked about early plant stresses, but as we move forward, farmers tend to induce their own stress on plants. You know, weed control is so important. And so herbicide application is happening. And so talk to us about how we'd reduce stress in those situations. So herbicide stress is something we've seen the last 20 years, ever since we've gone into the post herbicide markets, where we're really trying to solve the problem of killing those weeds that are out there. But really in today's world, we're actually spraying those crops when they're actually having maybe just two leaf or three leaf of the corn or the soybean plant out there. So it's a very early stage because we're trying to make sure we never let those weeds get out of the ground. And so that's where this harvest shield complete fits in is we're actually able to use those biotic and antibiotic stresses and break those down and have this immune system and at the same time, that uh, immune system will actually deal with the herbicide metabolism. So herbicides can actually solve the problem of the weed, but they can actually create something else that the plant has to break down. It's gonna need some manganese. Manganese is a very big uh, nutrient and that's found in the harvest shield. It's all set up along with some zinc to actually stimulate. We also see right away that uh, we can come back in and use our traditional home stretch on corn, home stretch ultra on soybeans. Home stretch ultras is really designed for the newest herbicide programs that are in soybeans. It can actually be used in corn. We have a lot of growers that do use it just as an easier way. And it's a much broader spectrum that provides a little bit more nutrition um, on those corn and soybean crops, but uh, we're, we're really excited about what we're seeing. So you can you could go with an earlier harvest shield complete that contains the micronutrients that you would see in a home stretch ultra plus the proline and the uh, organic acids, or you could go directly to those those other products that would solve the problem of the herbicide metabolism. The other thing that we start to see right uh, along with it is as plants start to stretch out and grow is we start to see nutrient imbalances. Typically those are gonna end up being small amounts of micronutrients that we'll start to see and we can start to really address those um, as the corn plant starts to stretch its legs, get a little height on it, or the soybean plant gets ready for flowering. We can uh, add something in and the one that's been working the best is the new NKBS. So we've got a, a potassium, boron, molybdenum, and now it's got sulfur added to it. And that sulfur is really responsible for assisting with more protein development in that crop, uh, giving us a lot more uh, bang for our buck. And it's really uh, been something that uh, solves a lot of the potassium issues. Potassium is very good at stress reduction when we have flooding or heat, drought, um, and, and it's helping move those sugars. So as we think back to how can we remove the stress and get it to produce more sugars, that KB product is designed exactly for that boron to make the integrity of the each cell better and then pump those uh, sugars, and that's where the boron fits in well. It's got molybdenum that uh, works in both crop to make the nitrogen that's in those crops more efficient. So it's not like you have to go back out there and apply more in. You can just utilize the in you've got with molybdenum that's added to it. We start seeing insect damage, comes along with the heat and drought a lot of times. Any of these products are all designed to lower the pH of the solution. If you go out and apply an insecticide and don't have that solution buffered to a lower pH, the insecticide isn't gonna work very well. These are some of the things that really are kind of a bonus to be able to add the nutrition to solve the sugar problem, but also reduce the insect feeding and be a, have a better insect kill. And lastly, disease and cloudy weather they can really be problematic. And so anytime that you're making a trip over that crop, 
you've got some answers to how to not only um, stop the insects, stop the disease, but you can start to turn the plant around, get those sugars moving, and get them to move those to the, uh, create more grain, and uh, finally um, increase your, your yield. Thank you for sharing all that, Ed. You know, it's interesting you hear about stress and we all can consider cool conditions in the soil when we plant. And we've heard a lot about herbicide metabolization and, and really the stress that that can cause. But I don't think we necessarily think about nutritional value being a potential stress later in the season. So thank you for sharing that. So with that, you know, the Revline hopper throttle seems to be a key component harvest yield complete, NKBS. And so thank you for sharing how those products can address those stressful conditions. And with that, that is your Maristem Minute.